Welcome back. My name is SD Class, and as you know, we have absolutely amazing shows coming to you live every night this week. And without further ado, I'm sitting with the absolutely amazing head of thought leadership, Nepoi Mukhatle. Good evening. Oh, what a lovely introduction. <laughs> I'm very well, thanks. How are you doing, Esti? Thank you so much for joining us, taking time out of your busy day. And I, I love just engaging with you just a little bit before the show is what I noticed about you and your characteristics is that you're very down to earth. And that's something that we need as millennials, first time home buyers, people who understand us, you know. I agree 100%. You know, a lot of the time um, buying a home seems like such a complex pro process, mm. but it really doesn't have to be. And I think our jobs, um, including all stakeholders in the property um, chain, is to make sure that we eliminate that complexity mm. and make it easy and helpful for people exactly. to own homes. Even coming into Nedbank shouldn't be this nervous, shouldn't be this nerve-wracking. <laughs> We're financial experts who are trying yeah, to do good. You're so the people who help us. No reason to be nervous. Exactly. And on that note, uh, a few of my friends, you know, in the group of millennials, I'd like to think I fall in that group. Um, <laughs> we, we all, we, we looking to buy our first home and we're looking for guidance, mentorship, help, financial help. Mm -hmm. Financial literacy was never part of our ball game growing up. It's nothing we knew. We weren't uh, equipped with that type of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So what do you think that millennials can do to avoid any troubles that come in their way when purchasing that first home? Mm -hmm. Sure, Esther, you make such valid points, right? And I think, first of all, um, you know, I think millennials have gotten a really hard rap, right? Mm. Um, and perhaps we should be having the conversation about what should people who are buying homes in the future be aware of, right? Because I think, you know, whether we're talking about millennials or we're talking about Gen Z, mm. um, it's about people who are buying homes in the future. future yeah. And I think with the complexity that the pandemic has brought around, I think the first thing is to widen the scope of your options, right? So if you are somebody like myself who has the flexibility of not necessarily having to walk into an office for work, mm. think about how much you can alleviate the pressure from your wallet by buying something that is a little bit further outside of your normal place of work, right. right? So for instance, I mean, we're here in this beautiful building in Santon. You know that prices for individual units around this area are at a premium. Um, so why not consider an option of buying a property a little bit further away so that you get more bang for your buck? Mm. So that's just one of the ways that yeah. uh, millennials and other people in the future the home upcoming. buying process can can mitigate yeah. some of those risks. The upcoming generations. Mm. And, I, and, and I think it's so important and key that we actually look at, because a lot of our viewers actually, and I say this week after week, because we notice m younger people coming to the show, starting from 16 to 18, they're still in high school. Mm. And I love that they're thinking about property already or investments. Mm. And um, on that note, talking about like our parents going back home, we all have our family home that we visit. And m many cases, our parents are still paying off their bond. Mm. How do we, as the younger upcoming generation, avoid being in a similar space? Mm. How do we pay off our bond sooner? How can we avoid that with being, I know, I know being financially literate is key and mm. one of the key points, but what other mechanisms are there? Yeah, so Esti, there's actually quite a range of options that are available to make sure that um, the pitfalls mm. that might occur when owning a property and particularly paying it off um, when you think about a bond or anything of that nature. Um, there's lots of stakeholders in this property process that can help along the way. So there are many options that are available for first-time home buyers. One of them is through a government subsidy called FLISP, which stands for the Financially Linked Subsidy Program. And this is a program that allows first-time home buyers who are earning between 3,500 to 22,500 Rand per month the opportunity to have a cash back paid into their bond as part of mm. um, the purchase of a home. Mm. So that's really kind of one of the ways that you can tap into and make the home buying process less burdensome. The other option, of course, which is also government um, in, uh, initiated, is the fact that all properties under a million rand do not have a transfer duty applied to them. So that's also one of the big wins in as far as being able to access um, the property market and make it a little bit more flexible and manageable for first-time home buyers. Mm. And we always talk about research, research, research. And I found out about FLIS last year for the first time. 
Really? Yeah. And it's shows like this and it's conversations with people like you that educate us as the mm. younger generation because, and I'm sure there, there are many other solutions that mm. maybe we won't have time to mention today, but it's about doing your own research and speaking to the right people and networking. And I think a lot of the times we talk about how afraid we are to approach people mm. of, uh, the stature, this, who have the status, who can help us, because we're like, ah, they're going to ask us to pay. Yeah, and you know, Esther, <laughs> you touch on a very important point, right? So, you know, we, we, we think of millennials and young people who are buying properties in the future, right? Mm. And some of the thinking around that is that a lot of uh, young people feel like they don't want to be tied to a property. You know, yeah. they want to be able to travel, even post-COVID perhaps, <laughs> um, but they want that that fluidity of being able to be anywhere and not be tied to Down, anything. Yeah. That does not mean that property purchasing doesn't play a factor in that. Mm. So nothing stops young people from taking up the opportunity to buy properties and use them for investment purposes, right? Exactly. So start the journey now and actually add to your investment portfolio, yeah. um, even though you might not consider staying there permanently. Mm. We always talk about this mm. passive income. Mm. Go travel while your house makes money for you. You know, your 100%. property, your investments make the money for you. 100%. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the trends between, because. Um, I called you a veteran earlier, you know, you've been around, <laughs> you've been in the game and I want to ask you a little bit about the trends. I read an article, it was I think two years ago about how black women are taking over the market, the property market, mm -hmm. young, single black women. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's talk a little bit about the trends, uh, millennials maybe in this day and age and how it was back in the day and if we can touch on both things, renting mm -hmm. and buying. Mm -hmm. Sure, interesting. Yes, and I remember that um, piece of research yeah. that was done where um, women, particularly black women of course, are taking up space in as far as the property purchasing um, arena is concerned. Mm. And I think that's a consequence of a number of things, right? So firstly it's about accessibility. Um, far more they are more women, particularly in South Africa, but across the continent, who have access to opportunities like they never had before, right? The fact that you and I are sitting here having, having this a conversation, conversation about property tells 100%. you a lot. Yeah. Right? So I think accessibility has played a large part in as far as how young women are able to access um, property and buy up property. I think the next trend or opportunity that we should look out for is this whole notion around work from home, mm. right? And what that means to living spaces for a large number of people. So do we still want to be living in one bedroom units? Or do we want a lifestyle that allows us to live in our homes mm. as often and as frequently as we are doing now during lockdowns and during a pandemic, right? So I think the, the narrative around um, you know, sectional title versus freehold, mm. um, one bedroom versus three bedroom is really going to be an interesting debate that we can take forward. And I think lastly, the third trend that we need to watch out for is rental versus purchasing, yeah. right? And I think that plays into that whole millennial or Gen Z or property owners of the future space, right? right? So what is it that you want your home to bring? Right? Do you want your home to be an investment opportunity? Do you want it to be a space where you can raise your children and right. build a family or even look after your loved ones? Because right. there's a lot of us who um, have that, that kind of um, yeah. responsibility. And so part of that will determine how much the rental space changes and transforms mm. in a space and a time where people are really starting to consider what it means to own property. Right. Yeah. And I think it's important to know, and I've been doing a lot of research because I'm looking to move and yeah. or to do rent to buy or to purchase property and it's important for us to know I think we assume the word bond yeah. we assume that it's going to be like 20,000 rand where if you look at apartments that maybe you're looking in Santon mm -hmm. um, and it's about seven or let's say 10,000 rand a month you could find um, an amazing apartment maybe further away from Santon where you could buy it and pay off that bond a lot of this knowledge is new it's new knowledge to me and mm -hmm. I'm learning every day mm -hmm about these little things that or ways that I can purchase property and it's very key you said something amazing about knowing why you're buying your property knowing is it investment is it a first home is it a home mm -hmm. do you want to make this a home mm -hmm. or is it um, what whatever the other reasons were but what's important about that is because one of our guests previously spoke about the emotional attachment mm -hmm. to buying property mm -hmm. and when you're investing in a home 
to tell yourself, this is my home and two years later, it will be an investment, it's hard. Mm. It's not that easy to just mm. give up. Mm -mm. And I think, you know, we, we, we're moving towards a space and a time where things are no longer as structured as they were. There's fluidity. Mm. And so there's fluidity in our lifestyles as well. And I think we need to own and accept that. One of the key things that we also need to consider is that life and most things around it happen in cycles, right? Yeah. And the interest rate is one of them, right? So mm -hmm. interest rates work in a cycle. So when you're considering buying a home, particularly as a first time home buyer, right? Understand that interest rates are cyclical. Right now, we're experiencing probably one of the lowest interest rates, or mm. going through one of the lowest interest rate cycles. The repo rate is sitting at 3.5, which means prime lending is sitting at 7. Mm. And so this sounds like an opportune time to purchase a home, right? right? Which is great. But one of the key things that we need to consider is to make sure that as that cycle turns, that you and I are ready for that turn, right. right? And we're ready to make sure that there is a buffer in as far as being able to repay mm. at a higher interest rate mm. cycle. And so those are some of the mm. things that should be considered as you think about, am I buying this property to live in? Mm. Am I buying this property to invest? Either way, it's cyclical. Yeah, and when it changes, am I ready? Are you ready for that change? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we spoke about um, just bef earlier about us not or oh, me. I mean, say me because you're the veteran. <laughs> We're fine. She keeps saying this, right? She keeps saying we this talk like about <laughs> financial <laughs> literacy. That's your language. That's what you speak. You speak finance. Um, we talk, we spoke about financial literacy um, being foreign. Uh, mm. to a lot of young individuals. Mm. Uh, what, what would you say that Nedbank, or what would you say that you're doing to, especially when it comes to credit score, mm. this thing called credit score, mm. which a lot of us are only learning about now. Mm. Um, how do we maintain that? How do we check if we qualify for certain things? Mm. How do we even get a good credit? What is a good credit score? Yeah, so let's break down yeah. that credit score conversation a little bit, right? So your credit score is essentially a number that gets assigned to any individual who has a behavior in as far as how they pay their credit accounts. Mm. So whether it is a retail shopping account or a bank linked credit card, for example, you will be assigned a score based on your credit behavior. How often you paying the, the, the credit off? Are you paying the right amount? Are you paying it consistently? And that score is assigned by various credit bureaus across the country, right? So that is your score. That score allows people like ourselves at NetBank and other le credit lenders to make sure that when we are lending to you, we're not lending in an irresponsible or reckless manner. It is to empower our customers to make sure that the kind of credit decisions that are being made are the right ones. Mm. So that's the credit score uh, concept. How they, yeah. Mm. And then, so I think another important thing, because we are like talking to the next generation is how do we what do we need to do to actually have a good credit record to qualify for that home loan, mm, to qualify mm, to make that big investment? Yeah, and the, 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 the trick is simple, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's if you had to lend somebody money, mm -hmm. right? Their terms to that contract, if I can put it that yeah. way, right? So if I'm going to lend somebody money, I need to make sure that they when they say I can pay back every Monday, that's what they're going to do. do yeah. right? When they say I can pay you back 10 Rand every Monday, that's what they're going to do. Right? Mm. So the same principle applies when it comes to your credit score and how you, that credit score makes sure that your behavior mm. right, is the right kind of behavior. So make sure that you pay on time, you pay the amount that you said you're going to pay um, and have a conversation with your credit providers when you are not in a position to pay because that also sets you up for success and it shows your credit provider that you are part of this relationship and you you're going on this journey with them as opposed to keeping quiet and then you know things fall apart mm. we spoke about being ready for a change and ready for a shift and i think we can all agree no one was ready for the pandemic no one was ready for what 2020 had to bring and during that time of uncertainty mm. there were solutions made by Nedbank and by mm. people like you in you know sitting on the top there making these changes <laughs> and I wanted to find out because we're still in a time of uncertainty little things have gone back to normal but we're still 
here and we're still waiting for something to happen it's like we're on edge that's how it feels for me you know that this change can come at any moment and mm. you just have to be ready to adapt mm. and what has what has Nedbank done to help us make the application process for this investment for your first home mm. possible and easier during this time of uncertainty yeah you know here at Nedbank we have um a, a term that we use quite widely it's mm -hmm. called resilience mm. right? and I think that's such a powerful mm. word right in a world of complexity mm. in a world where there's a lot of change um, the, the, the level of resilience is what's going to set you apart and so one of the things that we have to make sure that the online home loan application process is easier is that people are able to apply anytime anywhere from the comfort of their homes so they can use any of our digital platforms to do so we have a fantastic sales and service team in the form of our distribution channels. So you can walk into any NetBank branch today, you can contact our contact center and they will assist you with the home. But I think what is key for us is to make sure that that application process is as seamless and convenient regardless of which channel you choose. Yeah. I think the last thing that I'd like to say just in as far as how we're making sure that we are very impactful in how we make sure customers are put into homes is that we have linked our loyalty and rewards program to a responsible borrower package so it's not just about you know giving away points for swiping or transacting which is what traditionally loyalty and rewards programs have been but I think at Nedbank what we've really tried to do is to make sure that we recognize those customers of ours that are responsible in paying back their home loan or their credit cards or their personal loans. In fact, um, just recently, um, because of that responsible borrower package, one of our customers was very lucky to have been selected for their home loan to be paid off in full oh, wow. because they were managing their, their, their behavior and their repayments so mm. successfully. So that's just one of the things. Yeah, mm. and I love what you said about resilience. I mean, back in my varsity days, we looked mm. at resilience as an elastic. Mm. So pulling it and pulling it, but it comes back. Mm. And I think the ability to do that, and it's not only for the people who for the younger generation who are applying for the home loans, but it's also people like you. Mm. On the other side, um, the people who were maybe afraid to speak to or ask mm. for advice, but just to, to show us that, no, we're, we too are resilient. So mm. we educate you to kind of have the same characteristics. Yeah. And on this note of uncertainty, we know that during COVID, we lost, people lost jobs. Uh, retrenchments was a thing and it was such a difficult time because a lot of us had to go and dig into that savings account mm -hmm. and touch money we didn't think we'd ever have to right now mm -hmm. and I just want to find out about like when it comes to how what, what Nedbank did during mm -hmm. that time for mm -hmm. the for their customers during again that time of uncertainty mm -hmm. sure that was a that was a tough time and I think mm -hmm. it continues to be a tough time for a lot of our customers so we had um, a range of debt relief uh, options available to our customers um, and I'll talk specifically about the home loan one. So we had payment holidays that had been worked out. Customers could actually go online to our digital platforms and ask for relief mm. because they had either, you know, been, um, um, you know, unable to work as a result of COVID or had r literally lost their jobs. Mm. Right? So that relief program um, has almost run its course. Nothing stops a customer today of NetBanks from contacting us directly and saying, I'm still struggling and I need help. And what we've decided and what we're very clear on is to have a very bespoke set of solutions depending on each customer's individual circumstances. So our ask to our customers is always to contact us have a conversation and then make the necessary arrangements because there are arrangements that can be made. Mm. Um, we spoke a little bit about this thing called FLISP mm. earlier and um, the chats about property among millennials, let me tell you something, it is coming up. It's, mm. it's, it's, a, it's a chat that we have at the dinner table now mm. from personal experience. It's something we talk about often. Um, we're not afraid of it anymore. Mm. We may not have enough money but we talk about it and the fact that it's part of the conversation right now is one thing that means something right just to have vision ambition exactly what the show is about mm -hmm. and we spoke about other solutions that people who do not have we talk a lot about not having enough money but between 3,000 to 22,000 you mm -hmm. said right mm -hmm. there are people who earn that much and they still can get property 
And so I'd like for you to just expand a little bit on how this FLISP thing works. If I was ready to apply tomorrow mm -hmm. and, you know, get my property, the process, how long does it take? Mm -hmm. um, what do I need mm -hmm. besides, you know, just earning in that income bracket? There's probably other things I need. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can also do talk a little bit about FLISP. Is it only for South Africans? Do only South Africans qualify? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more about this thing called FLISP. Yeah. Sure. So um, it's such a powerful initiative um, from government side, right? And I think what makes this even more powerful is that it has the support of the private sector as well. Yeah. So that income bracket is one criteria, so the, the 3.5 up to the 22 odd K range. But the other um, criteria is it's quite lengthy, right? So I would encourage you know, consumers to go on to, online to the um, housing department's website and just have a look at that criteria. So one of the criteria for FLISP is that you need to be in a household where there are dependents, um, that works in your favor, right? Um, and I think one of the things that is, um, what government is really trying to do is trying to address those parts of society where there is a fundamental need to house as many people as possible, mm. right? Um, the other thing that FLISP requires from a customer who wants to buy a property is that that property is linked to a bond. Mm -hmm. So you are not buying that property for cash. You are buying that property and have applied for a bond through one of the, the home loan providers. Yeah, so FLISP is, again, a powerful initiative um, run by government. And the beauty of it is that it has the collaboration with private sector. Mm. I think because the criteria for FLISP is so broad, my recommendation would be to visit the Department of Housing website and understand all that criteria and see which one uh, fits you best in order to make the right mm. application process. Again, research, and it's mm. so important to do your own research. Mm. Um, we can talk all day about <laughs> what you need to do, but at the end of the day, and I think what's so important about research is when you do it yourself, you kind of mm. understand it in your own words, you know, your colloquial, your terminologies, what you understand. And um, just before we wrap it up, um, I want to talk about, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to, and we, I, say, I say this all the time because I think it's my fear, maybe I shouldn't project, about going to the bank and asking for a home loan, about these discussions that we should be having yeah. as younger, as the younger generation. Yeah. And obviously there's, it's the stigma around yes. the, banks and it's talking about home loans but what has what has Nedbank done to kind of break break that narrative change that narrative mm. and to let go of that stigma made it easier for us to come to you mm -hmm. i think um you know sd it's also about purpose right mm. so so at Nedbank we're very purpose driven mm. um, our purpose is to use our financial expertise to do good for individuals communities and families and so when we talk about how we have made things a little bit simpler for the home buying and the home ownership process, mm. I think our branch network, I mean, walk into a branch today at NetBank and you will see the change. You will see the future yeah. in those NetBank um, stores. I think secondly, what we've done is we've broadened the channels that our customers can go to. Our digital channels are prime and ready for anybody be you a first time home buyer or a seasoned um, professional of buying homes to access toolkits that allow you to search for properties, get property information and apply online. Yeah. And we've also obviously got um, our contact center who has a strong bevy of um, sales consultants ready to actually yeah. assist with that process. Thank you so much, Lepoy, for, for joining me today. But I don't, I, I don't want to end it right there. <laughs> I want to ask you a personal question. We're talking about home loans and um, you've given us such amazing advice on what we can do. And this also, this is not only for the millennials. It's not only for the younger generation. If there's anything you can take from this conversation and apply it to your own life, please. Uh, I mean, you've made it seem sound so easy. And I think the key thing here is that it is. Mm -hmm. And last question, what does home mean for Lepoy? What does home mean, that thing home? <laughs> sure, now you're getting personal, but I can completely answer that. Um, you know, home for me is um, two things. Mm. Home for me is Johannesburg because I have an absolute love affair with the city. Yeah. Um, and I think anybody uh, who's tied to a city and its energy can, can relate to that. 
and then home is also um, where my family is. Yeah. So, so my, my husband and my kids, and I think wherever they are is where I'll be. That safe space, mm. that safe haven. Again, thank you so much, Lupoy. Thank you. And we'll, we, we need to have this chat again, and I think you'll see, and we spoke briefly about trends, but trends are changing. Thank you so much, Lupoy, for joining us. That's all for tonight, the first time home by a show. And we'll see you guys again next week, same time, same place.